Alex here from Black Sheep IT Consulting. In this video, we're going to look at what happens exactly during a repository upgrade where a standard object, like a workflow process, a complex object type, is modified during the repository upgrade by Oracle. So Oracle changed features of that workflow process. And that workflow process is a standard workflow process, which also has been customized. So it's a customized standard object. And these customized standard objects, they are quite difficult to understand what happens during the repository upgrade with those objects and what changes actually survive, the customer changes or Oracle's changes. So in order to verify that and dive deep into it, I selected this one, this workflow process, SISOM Modify Products and Services Process. Uh, let's look at it in uh, the version that I'm updating from. This is just to confirm 21.2. So that's a machine running 21.2. And this is the workflow as it looks standard in 21.2. So note it's not customized yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a few example customizations, typical stuff that developers would do before I run the repository upgrade. So let's create a workspace. And now let's make a few customizations. So this should somehow simulate a situation where you have a customer modified standard object, a complex one at that, like a workflow process, and you customize that standard object. It's a fairly normal procedure. It's supported by Oracle. Okay, so let's first leave a, a stamp on the workflow itself. So that's the workflow properties I'm looking at here. And let's just add a comment, BCRM modified 21.2. And of course that's just a, well, a comment, which was empty before, which we expect to see on the other side. And let's make an edit here. So I'll just grab this step here. Um, move it around a bit because that's common developers make make room for custom stuff so you move it around and let's just highlight it with the color so you can really see the custom version of that that's part of the layout definition of that step now it has a big red color so it has been moved that's customization number two besides the comment i made now let's grab an input argument let's grab this one and of course, it doesn't make any technical sense now, but I just leave a trace here. That's, I'm modifying that value. So that's a very distinct change. And let's add a comment here so we can identify it later. Okay, so we modified one workflow step input argument. And of course you may you do new stuff. Uh, so let's add a business service somewhere here. So that's new custom business service. Custom business service. Let's just pick Eliza. It it hasn't doesn't have to do anything. Um, let's save that quickly. So that's a new element. And also let's just highlight the, the shape color so you can identify it quickly. And that has to be connected. So what you usually would do is take the one connector that you want to reconnect. That's an existing connector and we modify it. And then you need a, a new connector. So drag in the new connector and oh, connect it up the way you like it. Okay, so that's enough of changes. We, we want to keep it light, but of course 
you can imagine as you go through the years of customizations of some standard objects like this workflow, there might be dozens or even more of insert, update, or even delete operation stuff that got deleted in a prior version to Siebel when deleting things was still possible. Now they're just inactivated. So all, all kind of stuff really happens here and this is just exemplary. So let's save this one. Let's presume it's fine and test it. And of course I need to uh, checkpoint and deliver it. So that will be delivered into our production. That is deliver standard workflow customization. And that produces main three or main 300. So the workflow gets delivered and then it, it stays there for, well, years and months and gets more customization. So that's how, how Siebel works. Okay, so just to confirm, let's go to main, let's open main version three and let's look at the workflow as it is in production in that fictitious environment here. Okay, there it is. Yes, so indeed main three version is now the customized version. So now we are changing the tunes and now I shall update this 21.2 environment to 23.4. That's quite a big update. It's two years, two months, but still in the MDE era that we are, uh, it's all just about running the MDE. So you have seen this in other videos or done it yourself. So you run setup.bat. That's a Windows installation, of course. It's slightly different on Linux or Unix. And yeah, so I'll update the SES first. That, that directory here hosts my Siebel server and gateway. And that's also commonly referred to as the SES. And I'll just go here to the post installation database update option. Post installation database update is mandatory. So I'll execute it uh, and I need to enter a few parameters here. So the table owner table on a user, password of the same guy, database user, password. I need an ODBC data source. So let's check out the ODBC data sources here. I'll pick the Siebel install DSN. I'm quite sure that's a valid data source on this system. Siebel repository is fine. I got a very simple database here with the same index and table space. So don't try this at home. SSE underscore role is the, well, the security group of the grantee. And I have a German language pack here. So if you are in that situation and you see that list of other languages, make sure you select every other language. You have to shift click or whatever. And only then when you click next, Let's scroll down here. You will see it listed here. If, if it's not listed here, it will not import the seed data for that language. So that's a failed <laughs> update then. Okay, so let's install. And uh, well, this will kick off a flurry of activities. What happens exactly is that now, currently the installer is preparing and then it will copy the new binaries it will take a backup, of course, create a backup folder, and then we'll copy over the new binaries as of 23.4 into the respective folders. We'll extract them basically. And among these binaries, there's a zip file for the repository upgrade. And that's what we're waiting for. We, we want to explore the repository upgrade really. Uh, notice that we're not running it yet. This is not a repository upgrade. This is just a normal update of binaries. And it will include, because we selected it, it will include the mandatory post install database update, which you have to run once per database or once per enterprise. So if I would have a 
second Siebel server, or of course you, you have much more Siebel servers, you can skip the post install database update step for any other installation literally. So just one time you have to run it and successfully so. So the mandatory seed data, mandatory schema changes and mandatory manifest if present are really included. So we have a fairly big gap here, two years, two months. So we'll, we'll see a lot of movement during the post install database update. So here the uh, installer has already finished laying down the binaries and it's now preparing for the remaining steps, including the post install database update. Let's wait that up. Okay, so we can see uh, the gateway registry was also upgraded. Uh, yes, there's a new gateway between those versions. And so Zookeeper practically got an up upgrade and now it runs the post installation setup. So this is fully automated. You can of course keep watching it in, for example, task manager, uh, well, that's Siebel tools. I still have it open, but let's see the CPU. Um, yeah, funny enough, it, it it starts the Siebel server. So let me just uh, put an end to this. The Siebel server starting up may, makes absolutely no sense since we are still installing the mandatory database changes. And here's the post install database setup executable and you will also see it spawns other executables so this one for example seep dev cli i can see the big command line here so um, yeah so here it imports in batches it imports zip files literally that contain the mandatory changes probably schema changes at this point um, so again it's all automated on windows the startup of the Siebel server interferes with that. Um, you can cut it off, literally. You will have to start the enterprise after that anyway. So uh, yeah, let's, let's wait for the whole process to finish. Uh, we will come back shortly. So we are back, um, has run for some time. The post install database update is finished. So now let's see what happened here. So first we have a report on the post install database setup. Uh, keep in mind that we're focusing on the repository upgrade on this one and the outcome, but it's nonetheless a part of an, any update. So let's finish the installer here. Go to the uh, logs, the log folder of the Siebel server, and there you will find the post install database setup HTML report. So that's quite the useful document here. It does not tell us what version we're coming from. We know we come from 21.2, so we're spanning 26, 26 updates from 21.2 to 23.4. And there's a summary page with uh, parameters, etc. We can see that the workflow upgrade already ran and the task upgrade, for example, ran. So hopefully successfully, you have to, would have to look into the log files for that. So 22.7 for introduces workspace management for task UI. So the, those tasks in your repository have been updated. Yes, that happened. And uh, there are qu quite a lot of uh, pieces of information. So do take your time with that report and the log files. And for the post install database setup report, it really tells us what's going on. Uh, post install database setup manages schema changes, mandatory schema changes. You can see them in the schema tab. At least you can see the table names or index names and column names new or modified. So I, I like that. That's quite a lot actually. And you can see literally here uh, across the 26 updates, 
Oracle has yeah introduced a lot of new columns, indexes, and tables, and that this table gives you a, a first glance, and you can then identify some critical tables, for example, where you also have modifications, maybe in the same column, which you really shouldn't have. But who knows? Manifest, yes, uh, 21.4. Um, has some manifest changes, so there's quite a lot going on here with regards to the uh, probably task editor 22.7. That's a big one. So that's open UI manifest that is also mandatory and gets into your database and seed data. Wow, <laughs> okay, so Oracle is busy and gives you a lot of seed data, mandatory seed data that is now in your development database. That's a development environment, by the way. And you have to migrate all these. Well, sorry, those changes don't have to be migrated because the post-install database setup also runs on any RR, test or production environment. And it will introduce those same changes. So you can prepare here uh, for changes. Of course, there shouldn't be many, there shouldn't be many conflicts out of that because let's say list of values, uh, that's mostly system stuff that gets introduced here, and yeah, you probably don't have don't have any conflict potential here, but who knows? Okay, schema manifest seed. That's the three things that post install database setup takes care of in DR and RR environments, and it ran successfully. So let's say bye bye to post install database setup. Now let's take a look at the Siebel server folder as it got updated, of course. Um, so you could just see, uh, okay, there's some folders. Today is 22 April. Uh, some folders being updated, definitely some content, uh, including the bin folder. And if you sort by date modified there, we can see uh, a lot of files are current or as of April when uh, Oracle, well, somebody pressed the compile button or something like that. Uh, you will also find among these binary files in the bin folder, you'll find, uh, let's search for them. We'll find zip files. And one of them is of particular interest when we now run the repository upgrade, you don't have to do anything with that zip file. But if you're really curious, uh, safest is to copy it to a safe place. So you have a copy, don't mess with the original. And let's rename this to repository upgrade 23.4. Let's extract it to a folder. And that's what happens during repository upgrade. So to understand that, you can see, okay, the, this repository upgrade feature includes changes from 20.3. So that's not, we are 21.2. So we will start here. But if it recognizes no repository upgrade has ever run, it will probably start here. Um, that's not bad because it, will not have any duplicate records, etc. Um, and 21.3 up to 23.4. So that's our, uh, yeah, 26, actually 25, there's one which didn't have any features. So that's our 25 folders that it will go through at least. And let's consider, for example, 22.12. Um, where any folder contains um, repository, seed data, and manifest, and also uh, sometimes schema changes. So four things, the repository upgrade takes care of four things, Sch seed data, schema, and manifest, but also repositories. So in the repository folder, you find a SIF file. And in 22.12, this was significantly big because there was a big update to the order management feature. So our the, remember the workflow I showed you at the beginning of the video, that workflow is in that SIF file. And with that knowledge, you can do something which it doesn't hurt. Uh, so you can go into 
Yeah, Siebel tools. Uh, it, it's still the old version of Siebel tools here, but it doesn't matter. I'll update it quickly. And let's create a new workspace just for um, REO prep. We will discard that workspace later. And we just use this workspace to import the archive. Well, what archive? The one we just saw, 23, uh, sorry, 22.12 repository SIF. So that's one way of actually, of course, you would have to look at 25 <laughs> folders, 25 SIF files. That's a, that's a bit of work. Uh, but understand. It's one way of understanding what what happens in the repository upgrade, what's really in there. Of course, Oracle gives you a lot of information, the release notes about the features, but this is really down to earth, <laughs> the nitty gritty details. So you'll see, for example, the quote for Maplet is, there's a new version of it literally here introduced by Oracle. So if you by any chance have modified the quote for Maplet yourself, you know, it's a it's a form applet, so there's a grid layout. So it's it's probably broken after after that import. And those SIF files, by the way, they get imported with the default merge option and the default resolution. So there's no way during a repository upgrade to tell it, oh, keep that or don't update that. It's not possible. So you have to deal with the outcome after after that, the aftermath, literally. So let's go to workflow process and yeah, there's our, there's the workflow. So I want to, and now probably I know, I know about this workflow. It gets modified. It will get modified during the repository upgrade. I just want to have a, let's say preview of what it will look like after the update. So I'm, I have created my development workspace as a, as a child of the latest main. So I can do something here and you would be probably surprised at what I'm doing here. I'm selecting anything except the, uh, well, let's select, can't select all of it here. Let's just, yeah, select all of them, unselect my workflow and now press delete on my keyboard. And that doesn't delete the objects from the SIF file. It's a copy anyway. It doesn't delete, it's just deleting them from the selection. So that just leaves that workflow that I want now to not import really. I just want to go to the next step. And that will, will um, analyze both versions in the current workspace. That's my custom version. And says no conflicts. That's interesting. So here we are back in Siebel Tools uh, with the a workspace I just created, uh, a development workspace, and it shows the, the workflow in its glory as I customized it. Now with that knowledge of there's a SIF file that will get imported, I can simulate the import, simulate what happens during the repository upgrade. Now, there's absolutely no need of doing this during the repository upgrade, but it's just for the sake of understanding what goes on. So during the repository upgrade, it will go through all these folders and import each SIF file like, like you can do here. So that's the 22.12 uh, repository SIF file from the repository upgrade zip file that we copied over safely and I just open that and here uh, there are, I can see there are a lot of objects so let's sort by type and 22.12 really introduces a lot of changes in standard objects that you might have modified because order management is an area where you modify a lot of standard objects. Uh, one example is the quote form applet which if you modify that standard applet prior to 22.12 and then run the repository upgrade, it will be more or less merged through a SIF import with the changes from Oracle, uh, resulting in a layout that you will probably not like. It's the same as with the real upgrade 
Um, so you would have to take action on that. With So you can in, use this page of the import wizard literally to see, okay, these are the objects. It's like opening a zip file. It's XML anyway, easier to read here. And let's check out the workflow. So the SOSOM modify products and services process. Uh, that's the one just in the background here. <laughs> And there's a new version coming in from Oracle. So there will be definitely conflict of, because how on earth could the SIF import with the merge option, which by the way is the default, which the repository upgrade uses, uh, how, how possibly could it merge all these changes into a functional workflow again? So let's try something, let's just, uh, make this easier. So we, I'm just what I'm doing here is I'm deleting everything from that selection. There's an option to select here, and actually press delete on your keyboard. And it says really delete, but you're not really deleting anything. It's just deleted from that selection here. So keeping only that that one workflow I'm interested in now, and keeping the merge option, which is the default when repository upgrade will run later. And what I'm interested in is the next window, but it says no conflicts were found. And that's really strange because I was expecting <laughs> conflicts here really. That's a bit weird. So now let's prepare for running the repository upgrade. So. Uh, as of 22.11, it's no longer allowed to run the repository upgrade against main as the parent. It will still, if you ran it in previous version, you know that it will still create an integration workspace underneath main, so keep the changes safe, but uh, still um, it's no longer supported. So you need a custom, uh, you need to create a integration workspace. Let's call it int ru for repository upgrade. And you can make that a child of anything you want. I, I'm making it a child of the latest main. So int ru uh, will have that latest version of the workflow that I modified. Okay. Okay, that is a typical situation, creating an integration workspace. And once it's done, we can keep Siebel tools open, by the way, if you want to watch what happens. And now we need to run repository upgrade. So I've prepared a script. So you find repository upgrade executable in the Sieb server bin folder, and it has a bunch of parameters pointer to the Siebel server home directory, table owner, user, password, ODBC data source, database type, database user, uh, index space, table space, names, SSE roles. It looks a lot like the input for post install database update with the languages. And the minus nine parameter, that's the one where you specify the parent integration workspace. Now it has to be a real custom integration workspace, not main. Main is not allowed. Uh, you have to specify that workspace with the minus nine parameter. So let's run this beauty using command line. Okay, and off we go. So it will analyze the current situation and it found that it has to start with 20.3. So if you have never run a repository upgrade, that's what, what it likely will do. And it has already, so here it goes back, following builds will need to be installed 20.3. If you have, let's say, run a repository upgrade on 22.7, it will likely start at 22.8. And well, to keep, well, keep your, your schema, seed data, manifest and repository data in sync with the 
master repository of that version you're going to, so in our case 23.4. So you can see that it first starts with the schema files, that is literally SIF files that contain the table and index definitions, um, and it imports those SIF files. So in task manager we can see a zipdev CLI running a batch import of SIF files. So that's what, what goes on literally. So you're as in as of 23.4, uh, schema objects are mandatory design repositories, so they're not workspace managed. So you will have at this moment, if you, if you, if you think of what happens in the database, there are new table and column definitions imported via SIF files. And later, of course, they will be applied. So even if, let's say, you run the repository upgrade, you decide let's not deliver that workspace that gets created later, you, st you still have the schema changes already, like it or not. So make sure to take a backup before you run the update, a database backup, and maybe also an environment backup of the machines to be on the, on the safe side to fall back to a really clean pre update environments. So now you see DDL dict kicking in and that's really where it applies the changes or D, well DDL dict DDL imp that's a famous DDL sync. So you can see it really at work here how that work importing those schema changes from 20.3 all the way to 23.4. Wow that's more than three years worth of schema changes. So it becomes a it becomes a little, a small upgrade project, really. So you see the incremental table publish, writing those table changes to uh, to the RR tables. And imagine if that happens here, schema changes. Uh, the run, the repository upgrade is only run on the development environment, and that means you have to use the migration application. And I showed that in one of my videos to migrate the changes schema, seed data, repository, and manifest with the migration application. Now, this of course shows that the schema service must run as part of the migration application and the seed data part tells us there must be a data make.inp file for the application data service to transport the seed data changes because that utility only runs in dev and not in test or prod. You have to use the migration application. Okay, uh, it's really fun to watch it here as, as we talk about it. Now it creates an integration workspace called int siebel update under int ru. Okay, so, okay, there's a command line to create integration workspaces. <laughs> uh, probably not documented. And it runs, well, there runs some data imp stuff. Okay. So it really kicks off a lot of stuff here. So let's go to tools and maybe refresh the workspaces list. Uh, yeah, there it is. There's the new, int, the new integration workspace that the utility created be below that as a child of that parent that we specified. And underneath that, there will be a developer workspace. So let, let's keep watching. This is fun. Yeah, there it creates a developer workspace right here before our very eyes called def sadmin siebel 23 underscore 4 under int siebel update version 0. Yeah, there's a create workspace switch in siebel def CLI. And now it's already, well, it's already batch importing SIF files. All the SIF files from those repository folders 20.3 all the way down to 23.4. So that is going to take a while. Okay, let's refresh real quick. And there's the developer workspace. Nothing to see yet. It will become visible once the first SIF file is committed. 
So it's like, um, again, the SIF file import is using the merge option. We should also see that here. Yep, there the, you, you can read merge here. So it's using a batch import option, but that's a SIF file import of multiple SIF files, but with the merge option. So and the default resolution of any conflict. So we'll now go into high speed mode. So basically I pause the video and we'll come back once uh, the whole repository upgrade is finished and then we'll check out uh, the, the report and we'll check out what happened to our workflow process. Okay, this was quite the wait. Uh, of course, in the video, uh, the high speed video, you don't see that, but it took several hours to complete the repository upgrade from 20.3 to 23.4. That was a lot of content has been imported and the process left behind a very useful HTML report, which we now will investigate. Okay, here's the report and we see the start time 742, 954. So yeah, that's more than two hours runtime, which is uh, pretty normal for the amount of information imported into the database. Uh, so the summary is uh, just fine. Probably you can grab a lot of log files here. Uh, the interesting part is the four pages that detail the repository changes, the schema changes, manifest and seed data, the four things that the repository update upgrade does. Repository being the, as we have discussed, the import of SIF files in merge mode. So a total of 277 applets, for example, have been inserted or updated. Of course, they're all standard objects, five applications inserted or updated and so forth. So uh, workflow 148 workflow processes, wow. Okay, so this information needs to be digested very carefully and it's probably wise to match it up with a list of standard objects that you know you have been customizing over the past years. So you should then look into them very carefully if they're still intact, especially complex object types such as workflow processes, applets, or uh, web templates uh, for, for that matter. Also the schema changes are impressive between those versions starting 20.3 going all the way up. So make sure you check if you use any of these tables intensively, uh, make sure you understand the changes and whether they have a conflict with your interests. There's also manifest uh, changes. Most of the stuff is from the data visualization uh, introduced in 22.5 and also take a look at the C data changes, which have some implication on your business case, on your use case or not. So that's the report that will take time to analyze. Now let's look into Siebel tools and let's take a look at the workspace. So this is the workspace we created. As you can see, nothing has been delivered into it as of yet. Then we notice the repository upgrade creates that integration underscore int underscore Siebel underscore update integration workspace. And that has already received a delivery from this development workspace that was created automatically to run all the SIF imports. And the list of modified objects is really a good start to maybe investigate and compare with your customization. So if you feel a little bit overwhelmed here, uh, then maybe sort start sorting by object type. And so you can, of course, scroll all the way down. So there's a total of 1,326 objects updated or inserted. And uh, so that's overwhelming at first, but you can 
for example, ignore almost almost immediately ignore any insert operation because that's a new applet or new workflow introduced by Oracle and you might want to use it and that's fine. Or many times you're just not interested because it's not your industry, for example, life sciences. If you're not using Siebel Life Sciences, then all the LS and clinical applets, even if they're updated, are not really interesting and you probably have never used them or customized them. So it's all about which object in this list have we probably customized. And if they're inserted during the repository upgrade, it's impossible that you have ever customized it. So let's do something like a query and just focus on the update operations. And that is 561. Okay, that's half the objects you have to really worry about. And for example, very simple object types like symbolic strings, uh, you also might not be interested. So for the sake of easier working easier with this list, uh, you might just go and do a file export in Siebel tools. Why not? So all the rows, all the columns, let's make a nice uh, tab file. And that would be a CSV file. Let's see if, well, I'm not sure we have, well, that's a notepad. Of course, we don't have Excel on these machines, but let's change that. So here's Excel, let me just paste that in. And there's our list of updated objects during the repository upgrade. We can now uh, use filters and sorting sort by object type maybe okay so the applets first and now you can go through the list and of course that will take some time several hours maybe go through the list and quick identify the objects that you might have modified you're not sure probably or sometimes you just know you have modified it uh, so for example you can do an exclusion scheme so let's say anything with clinical or life sciences in the name which is like this group of applet is not not relevant so do a relevant column here and say this is not relevant because you we're not using life sciences let's say Okay, then there's some asset management, ERM application, probably not relevant. Yeah, I'm not using Siebel ERM. Of course, I'm doing this very quickly and not too thoroughly here, but you can see that you can very quickly rule out objects that you're not using just by looking at the name, uh, the naming convention of Siebel. For example, then you're not using Siebel loyalty, then also the loyalties loyalty applets are not interesting, then you can probably ignore that bitmap category. Business components you have to look into carefully, you probably use some of those. And business object is updated, means probably there have been some business components inserted, so that you have to check, but it's probably good. Business service update, standard business services are rarely customized. So you're probably on the safe side. Classes are systems, so you're on the safe side, ignoring those. Integration objects, same is true. You might have modified one of those, but it's a simple object type. Like you have, when you have, let's say, added a new field, it will be merged. So it will, the new field will, the custom field will just be there. Uh, same is true for screens, we added few symbolic strings we can ignore. Few updates, well, yeah, they might be interesting. Uh, web page and web templates. There's quite a number of web templates where Oracle changed the code to fix uh, bugs with the accessibility. And if you modified any of these standard web templates, 
then there's definitely a conflict. These are complex objects. This is code. The same is true for workflow processes. So it would take some time to figure out which of these workflow processes you also updated in the past. And there's definitely a potential for conflict. Now, coming back to the workflow process, Remember at the beginning of the video, I showed you a workflow process that uh, was custom modified. And this workflow process has also been imported by Oracle. So let's do the following. Let's open this dev workspace. So we can also open the integration workspace. It doesn't matter. And find that workflow. So this is the next step. You have identified let's say this workflow that you know you have been customizing it's the sisom modify products and services process and let's see what became of that workflow so and there is the result of what we have been waiting for what happened to our custom customized standard workflow process well we can see the standard business uh, sorry the custom business service is still there uh, but we can also see that it's detached so the um, modified connector from count selected rows that we well uh, changed modified and point to our custom business service is now pointing again back to the standard so it's it's becomes became the standard connector again. And also the uh, edit asset selections that we modified, and we'll show you a comparison uh, soon, is back to standard. Uh, so barely any customizations other than new stuff that we create is left. Basically all the inserts are pre preserved, but all the updates are gone. And this workflow of course is not operational because it does not do what we want it to do. Well, this one would be just by chance operational. It would do the standard thing, but it would not definitely not do the custom thing. So here we have all the four states of this workflow side by side. So it all started with the prior standard, the standard workflow as of 22.11 or earlier. And the customer at any point in time has been modifying it. And you can see the two modifications that I created, the new business service, the modified connector, and the update to the edit asset selection step. So the new standard um, has added a lot of stuff around the multi-selection of uh, customizable products, by the way, and that was been introduced in 2212 or higher. So when you run the repository upgrade on this one with, with the customizations present that we have discussed, after the repository upgrade, that is any repository upgrade after 22.12 or higher will result in this weird half-baked workflow where you have your custom inserts preserved, but the custom updates are not preserved due to the fact that the SIF import is doing a merge with the default resolution where the file, the import SIF file often wins or most of, actually almost always wins uh, the file when there are differences between the objects. So what are the next steps here? So. You have identified the object definitions that have been modified by Oracle and by you, the customer, in the past. So any customer modified standard object definitions that are included in the repository upgrade. And you can, well, you can fix those. You can go to the workspace, um, to this one, and basically add a developer workspace and make the fix and deliver. So this is one option uh, that you have. So, but we now play a little bit of devil's advocate 
in that we are just going to deliver or attempt to deliver all these changes upstream. And what you would expect, and I expect as well, is actually that a rebase is enforced. Um, so this int ru workspace we created from main version three, where definitely the, the workflow process is there. So the version in int ru is representing the customizations, the old version, and now we are delivered, but it's not present in that workspace. Yeah, so that here is just a glitch. Yeah, there's nothing present. So in the int ru workspace, there's no object currently present as in that it has been modified or whatever. So now let's try and open. We've already opened it. Let's try to submit for delivery. And there's not, no prompt at all to do a rebase. Well, that's a little bit unexpected. Uh, there might be a, a, a rebase in the next step. So, so let's see. So let's deliver this one. Okay. And we'll come back when this is uh, finished. So the delivery has been completed. So now in int ru, let's refresh that. In int ru, we have all the objects here. So, so let's open this one and let's see what happened to the workflow. And as we can see, nothing much happened as was expected. The changes that were produced through the SIF import uh, have been just delivered one level up, but good to confirm this here. So now we could uh, run, for example, a test environment of this int ru workspace to verify the changes and identify maybe even more issues that have arisen. Uh, for now, I will just try and deliver that into main and see what happens. Okay, you submit for delivery. Again, there's no prompt for a rebase, which is interesting. And I can deliver this. So that's the repository upgrade 23.4. Okay, and we'll take a look when this is finished. All right, so now the deliver to main has completed. And uh, well, what happened to our workflow in main so let's open the new main version and let's take a look at the workflow and not not quite unexpected. The workflow is the same as has been produced by the repository upgrade. So it's basically an update to the custom version of the workflow, which results in a non-operational uh, workflow version. So yeah, that is that. Is that. <laughs> there you have it. So watch out for any objects that you have been modifying standard objects you have been modifying uh, for sake of completeness let's take a look at the merge log so for example if you look at this main workspace here and get the merge reports so from int ru1 to main4 uh, let's see if we can find 
any information regarding the workflow here. Yes, there's a lot. So, um, but there's no conflicts ever. So you just can see that um, input arguments, etc., have changed the sequence, for example. There's a lot of sequence information for input arguments, event visibility changes from, well, actually from uppercase to lowercase, or yeah, that's it, the from version value is used here. So you might find some hints there what happened. For example, here, the, uh, that's the use business object input argument that I modified. So the base version value, that's my comment that I entered, the two version value, um, that's what is in main currently, and the from version value is empty, and the workspace resolution is just the from version. So the deliver wins here, and that's, well, that's what happens. Uh, here is another instance that I prepared and that as a kind of an addendum to what we have seen. So uh, the same situation, basically the same repository and I delivered the int siebel update into int ru and now I'm going to try and do a rebase on int ru. So let's see if we can do this. Rebase, yes. And anything from main three into int ru version one, but there is no changes found to rebase. That's an interesting story to say the least. Now let's try something different. Uh, and this is just really try to make a point uh, how the rebase would look like if it would recognize it would recognize the changes. So let's go back to main three and export that workflow. So I'm adding it to an archive. Just call it workflow custom sif. And now let's create a workspace uh, right under int ru. Okay, and here let's import that. So let's do a merge. And now we should see at least some conflict. So here's the, the workflow. So we see that the file would win the merge. So it will basically reintroduce my comment here. And there's the process properties that would survive the new process properties, the workflow steps that would be merged. And what or what with the get all asset list step? Let's see the output arguments. There's really no trace here. That's interesting. Okay. Doesn't get me very far, really. 
Let's just try one thing. Let's try overwrite. So we're overwriting and that should reintroduce the custom version. But of course, at the risk of losing standard functionality that you wanted. So that's not really a good idea. Let's just see what happens. Interesting point here is that it, even the SIF import cannot delete anything that's not in the same uh, workspace. So that hasn't been created in the same workspace. It's, it's setting inactive to yes, which is a slightly different process. So the record is still there, but it's just updated. Okay, so now we have that workflow and now we can deliver it. So let's checkpoint it. Submit for delivery and deliver. Okay, and then let's see what happened to the workflow. So with the delivery done, let's open the new version of int ru and let's see how the workflow looks now. Well, and again, not quite unexpected. <laughs> we have re imported the SIF file from the custom the custom version prior to the repository upgrade. And well, of course it looks now exactly like the custom version before, but it does not include all the new uh, elements added by Oracle. So it's back back to yeah, back to zero <laughs> state to uh, or So it's back to square one and depends on your situation. If you're happy with the version before the Oracle feature, you will go going, you, you, you will be missing the Oracle feature, of course. So with that, uh, that was a deep dive into repository upgrade and what happens when you modify a standard object definition that is also included in the repository upgrade. So be prepared for additional analysis and additional work in fixing or merging the changes manually. Thanks very much for watching this one. Take care and bye-bye.